devastating effects of natural disasters in two African countries, Morocco and Libya, that have left immense damage to infrastructure and affecting the lives of their citizens. Natural disasters often strike without warning, leaving behind a trail of destruction and heartache. In Morocco, Mole Brahim, near Marrakesh, many buildings were severely damaged following the quake. While in Libya, overflowing rivers and torrents have inundated residential areas, causing chaos and forcing people to evacuate their homes. The impact extends beyond immediate physical damage. Meanwhile, emotional toll in both countries is immense as people grapple with the loss of loved ones and the trauma of losing their homes and possessions. To speak more on this and the effects of climate change, we're now joined by Tefadzwa Mabdue, a climate change expert from Harare. Thank you so much, Tefadzwa, for joining us. It's a pleasure. And now, Tafadwa, it seems like Africa is beginning to experience the impact of climate change driven natural disasters more now than in the past. Why is this so? And what exactly are the primary contributing factors to these disasters? Uh, I, I think the trend is, has been increasing gradually over time in terms of the red and the intensity of climate disasters that we've been experiencing across Africa as a whole. And this year, of course, every year is getting worse and worse. So if you look also at temperatures, which are a good indicator of the climate crisis, they show you that on record every year is becoming warmer than the previous year. And Africa, we already know that is particularly vulnerable to climate change for various reasons and that we are a hotspot. So what we are starting to see or what we've been witnessing is, is really the effect impacts of climate change affecting lives on, on the African continent. Are we expecting it to get worse if nothing is done about it? Uh, but by all indications, it is going to get worse uh, if nothing is done about it. There's an urgent need to adapt and build adaptive capacity in Africa and to transform African institutions to invest in climate resilient infrastructure and a lot of these uh, you know, long-term interventions, all of them require significant investments in climate funds, a lot of it which Africa does not currently have. So th the situation does not look very good, but there is hope if urgent interventions are taken. And to what extent would we say that we attribute all of this to the natural, uh, all of these natural disasters to the impact of climate change? I mean, you have spoken extensively of the trends that we are seeing. How much of it is actually um, caused by the impact of climate change? Okay, so we do know for a fact that several of the disasters, most of the disasters that have been experienced, in particular uh, this year, there has been follow-up confirmation from you know, the climate scientists confirming that the events were worsened by climate change or the probability of the, that event happening was more than doubled by climate change and then intensified by climate change. So there is science that is confirming that a lot of these events, the heat waves that were experienced uh, this year around June, the wildfires that accompanied that, and some of the floods and droughts that have been experienced so far, the science is there to confirm that these are being enhanced and worsened by climate change. Now, are there any noticeable efforts that are made by both governments, international bodies, and even individuals to address these challenges posed uh, to Africa by climate change? I think the, the most immediate effort that is required is halting further carbon emissions so that we change the trajectory. Uh, we've, we've already gone or we are threatening to go past the Paris threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius. We might breach it this year uh, when El Nino really kicks in uh, in the summer season for Southern Africa. But there is still a window of hope if we make urgent decisions to hold further greenhouse gas emissions and that means taking major decisions on the use of fossil fuels, halting those, transitioning to renewable energies, and of course the investments that are needed to protect lives and investments in things such as early warning systems, which could have made a huge difference, especially in Libya, and really saved a lot of lives compared to what happened in this particular instance. 
Climate change expert Fazwa Mabadi, thank you so much for joining us on the news and shedding more light on the causes of climate change. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.